everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Just Another Struggling Writer, the beleaguered author's one-stop shop for commiseration and hopefully inspiration. My name is Carrie Scher and I am Just Another Struggling Writer. Today I am doing a book review of a book that I read at the tail end of last year and loved, but since I read it after I had already filmed my end of year wrap up, it didn't make it in and so I didn't get a chance to really talk about it. So I'm gonna be reviewing it here because I really, really did love it. It was one of my favorites of the year, and that is Sword Heart by Teen Kingfisher. Sword Heart is a book about a woman named Hala who very unexpectedly inherits quite a bit of money, and her relatives immediately try to start marrying her off so that they can have access to that money. Obviously, she wants nothing to do with this and is trying to figure out a way around it when they lock her in her room until she agrees to marry one of her cousins. Desperate to get out of this situation, she draws a sword that she had found mounted on the wall when out pops a person. This person claims to be the spirit of the sword and is now duty bound to protect Hala. Together, they go on a journey to secure, of all things, a lawyer so that Hala can have access to her inheritance. Hijing Sensu of the most delightful order. Now, I'm going to be talking about minor spoilers throughout the book. I won't get into it too deep, but just so you know, there are going to be bits and pieces that I will talk about that may count as spoilers, but again, nothing too specific. So there is so much to love about Sword Heart. Not only is it just super charming and super cozy, it's also a fantasy romance with characters who don't quite fit the mold of what you would think of in fantasy romance. Our female protagonist, Hala, is a widow and she is in her mid-30s and is not looking to really be in a relationship. She doesn't want to have any kids and she is not considered conventionally attractive. And then you've got Sarkis, who is the spirit of the sword, who, yes, can only be physically present when the sword is drawn. And so they come up with this cute little way to keep it permanently out of the scabbard. He's hundreds of years old at this point. He doesn't know where he's at. He's been bound to the sword for hundreds of years. And so he's, he's very much out of time in that he doesn't know where he is. He is not used to this country's customs or their gods. And they don't really get along at first because Hala is just so endearingly like awkward. When she's nervous, she just tends to ask a lot of questions. And these questions just don't always seem to be well directed. And that kind of gets on his nerves. As we later learn, though, Hala is actually really smart. She knows how to play to an audience and use the perception that people have of her to her own advantage. The world that the story is set in is actually a world that T. King Fisher has written in before for a series called The Clockwork Boys and has written more stories in this world since. Now, I don't know anything about The Clockwork Boys. I haven't read it. I haven't read any other entries in this world. This was my first introduction and I found it really, really interesting. I really like the myriad gods that this land has and like the way they interact with each other and how they rise and fall out of power. I really find all of that interesting. The interplay between the priesthoods, which there's one that kind of serves as an antagonist and a major plot point. I thought that was really interesting. I'm definitely interested to read more books in this world. It just seems like there's just so much more potential there. I love that the god that they turn to for help is basically the god of lawyers and that their priests are attorneys. Uh, I really, I found that really, really charming. The lawyer that they end up hiring from this priesthood is a non-binary character who I really personally enjoyed. It was really, really seamless how they were introduced. There was no explanation of pronouns. They just carried on with it. And I really, really enjoyed that. There was also like a anthropomorphic animal, like a badger or something kind of. I really, anyway, they, that was a really fun character as well. And just the whole dynamic of the quest was really, really compelling. Like I said, I started reading it in the morning on my break at work. And by nine o'clock that night, I had completely finished it. So I say one sitting, but I mean, I couldn't finish it at work. Could I? So I just read it in bits and pieces. And then by, by when I got home, I just binge read the rest of it. And it was just so charming and so wonderful and so cute. And I really just loved the romance between Hala and Sarkis. As they travel together and as they grow closer, you can kind of see, I, first of all, I love the he fell first, which is very apparent here. He fell first, which is so funny because 
as their dynamic plays out at the beginning, you wouldn't think that'd be the case, but he does immediately begin to see her true colors and see like how tough and brave she is despite her circumstances and despite living in a world that doesn't foster that or encourage that in women. I just love his yearning for her. That whole first half of the book was just so good because of all of like the tension and the yearning. Whereas she is thinking the whole time that he still hates her or at least doesn't like her and is like begrudgingly going along with her. She likes him, but it's more like respect and gratefulness and all of that. Whereas he is like really, truly falling in love with her. My only regret is that that tension kind of falls away towards the back half of the book. I really would have loved to have that to have continued to build and build and build. I loved his perspective so much because of just seeing how he was adapting to his new surroundings and this new reality and also to her. Like I said, it was just really, really great for him. And, you know, just thinking about how attractive she is to him. Again, this is a woman who is in her mid-30s at a time where a woman is considered past her prime when she is like 25. That was really excellent. Uh, like I said, I wish they had just she had just continued to build that more. There was a plot point around the 55-60% mark that I really, really enjoyed. I thought it had a lot of potential and obviously we couldn't linger in it too long because we were getting up into the end of the book and towards the climax. But again, it just made me more, made me more interested in the world building and interested to read other books in this world. I don't think there's a direct sequel or anything like that to Sword Heart, but there are other series, other books in this world specifically. I'm such a huge fan of Teaking Fraser. Her writing is just so, it, it has a way of drawing you in, and that certainly was the case here. And I also love that she writes protagonists that are not like your standard issue female protagonist, you know, young, hot, tough. Her characters are typically in their mid thirties, not conventionally attractive and don't possess qualities that you necessarily ascribe to fantasy heroines. And I love that you root for these characters a little bit more when they're a little bit more realistic in this way, where they're not just carbon copies of each other. So my only real complaint and the reason I didn't give this five stars was because the third act conflict that arose between Hala and Sarkis, I thought was a little trite. It didn't really seem like it would be that big of a deal and cause what it caused. In fact, Hala has a internal thought of if he had just told me this to begin with, I, it wouldn't have mattered. And it just made me wonder, why does it matter now then? You know, like it just didn't seem like that big a deal. And her reaction just felt very like, well, I need a reason for these two to break up for a minute. So this is it. And I just didn't like it. It didn't feel authentic and it didn't feel true to the character of Hala to have such a meltdown about it. I mean, I understand that the plot point needed to happen for the climax to happen. I get all of that, but it felt a little phoned in. But apart from that, I loved it. I loved, again, the characters. I loved the central conflict at the at the crux of this. I love the priesthood of lawyers. I just love that so much. I love the interplay between everyone together, the group, the quest, the setting, the atmosphere, the writing was so good. This was just a really, really great read. I gave this four and a half stars. And I definitely recommend this book if you are looking for a nice, cozy little romance that has some stakes to it that aren't just the, the relationship itself. There are some outside stakes. There's a little bit of a quest. There's a really great world outside of this story that is just waiting to be tapped into and yet it doesn't feel like we're being baited at any point it doesn't feel like we're we, we have things that are missing or left out everything is very very tight and concise and perfect and you can read this in a day like i said if you have a day to yourself you could just park your butt on the couch get a cup of hot cocoa and a nice blanket and just fly through this i know i did i just loved it so much so if you're a fan of T. King Fisher's writing, if you're a fan of fantasy romances that don't feature your kind of prototypical fantasy romance couple, this is definitely a book you should recommend. I feel like I'm really late on the bandwagon though, because this is, you know, like five or six years old at this point. So I don't know if I am in a position to recommend it, but if you haven't read it, I definitely think you should pick it up. And that is everything I have today. I hope that if you haven't read this book, I have given you something new to read. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part of Sword Heart is or what your favorite T. Kingfisher book is that I should pick up next. As always, if you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.